Hello students. Today in biology we are going to learn lesson 3 tissues, plant and animal tissues. In unit 1 we have covered plant tissues. In unit 2 we have covered animal tissues and now we are going to learn animal tissue continuation and unit 3 connective tissues. Connective tissue is a tissue which binds one tissue with another tissue and also connects various organs keeping them in proper place. It has three characteristics. Abundance of intercellular substance, the matrix, fewer cellular elements and fibers. See, if you take a wall, the bricks are arranged and to keep them big bricks in a place, we use a smarter cement, sand, and mix and then put them in a proper place. The same work the matrix will do here. That is why this tissue is called connective tissue. Bricks are cells and what we are applying that cement material is called the matrix. Like that very fewer elements, cellular elements will be there in this. The rest all is fiber. Now the connective tissue is classified as followed. Connective tissue proper. Connective tissue proper serves for packing or binding, binding the organs. Suppose you take our skeleton above which muscles, above its skin, then what happens? The muscle, we will, it will be like a bag. The whole thing will drop down. Isn't it children? The bones, the muscle and all must be fixed. Then only you will get the structure. That work is done by this connective tissue proper. It will it is it will act as a stuffing material. Supportive connective tissue. It gives support. So if you take your bookshelf, it will have a frame, metallic frame or wooden frame. If that frame is not there, it is like a gunny bag. Isn't it? The same job will be done by this supportive connective tissue. It will give framework. Now fluid connective tissue. Fluid means you all know it is in the form of liquid. Example is blood and limbs. Now connective tissue proper. It is again divided into three categories as follows. Areolar that is packing material. Areolar connective tissue. It is most widely spread occurring beneath the epidermis of the skin. If you pinch your skin and pull it up, below that you find that areolar tissue. It makes the skin elastic and helps to withstand pulling strain. You might have seen children in a shop. You will buy one porcelain or one terracotta doll or something. The doll when they pack, Around that, they will keep some paper or grass to prevent the damage, isn't it? Similarly, our body organs are packed with a packing tissue called areolar tissue. Now, we are moving on to adipose tissue. It has specialized cells which store fats, the fat containing cells. This tissue forms padding under the skin and around the kidneys, eyeball, etc. Padding under the skin acts as an insulation for retaining the body heat. Our body temperature is maintained by this adipose tissue gene. The temperature of the any organism, even if it is a cold blooded animal or the warm blooded animal, the temperature is maintained because whenever it is required, the fat will burn and produce some heat and maintain the temperature. That is why it acts as an insulation substance. Now we are moving on to fibrous connective tissue. It is mainly formed of fibers, fiber forming cells which forms tendons connecting muscles to bone and ligaments connecting one bone to another bone. Tendons. Now we will take tendons. When we are, I was teaching, when I was telling you about connective tissue in the introduction, I told connective, our body will have framework. And that framework above that muscle, above that skin, all together human being, isn't it? 
imagine one bone above the another bone without any thread or any tying material or any elastic material they will fall doesn't it children so here also there are some thread like structures fibers we call these fibers are ligaments they connect one bone to other and once the structure skeletal structure formed above which it is nicely packed by the muscle can you keep the muscle simply touching the bone like that loosely no it has to be it has to be tightly packed isn't it children that connection is done by tendons got it children so when you compare tendons and ligaments 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 are more strong but less elastic tendons since they bring movement of the bones they connect muscles muscles will bring movement of bones so they are relatively more elastic and less strong less rigid this is the major difference between tendon and ligaments now you can see areolar tissue how they are distributed in the diagram 3 you will find areolar tissue also fibers yellow fibers white fibers children here yellow fibers means ligaments white fibers means tendons now supportive connective tissue cartilage is a non porous tissue it has a thickened intercellular substance called matrix now you know what is meant by matrix so here thickened intercellular matrix will be there and that is a non porous it has no blood vessels or nerves cartilage is semi transparent and elastic cartilage cartilages are found in the tip of the nose external layer trachea bronchial tubes between vertebrae and at the end ends of each long bones the thigh bone between the thigh bone and the uh, leg and uh, we have the uh, shank shank bone and thigh bone and uh, arms also you will find this cartilage children cartilage is non porous as well as elastic so when you pinch the external ear because of this you will get the pain sensation on the skin and the other places but not the cartilage isn't it because cartilages is not supplied with with blood vessels or nerves bone is hard porous tissue it has good supply of blood vessels and nerves it consists of both living cells called osteoblasts and rigid mass of inorganic cells children bone cells are called osteoblasts and cartilage cells are called chondroblasts got it these cells are cartilage cells now we just go again to the cartilage cartilage cells are filled in fluid filled lacuna lacuna in plural lacuna singular got it in a uh, lychee fruit and all you will see no water filled like that filled water like substance will be present inside that lacuna in that this chondroblast will be floating that is with the case of cartilage when you take bone bone cells are called osteoblasts they are arranged in a circle and each circle is called lamella l a m e l l a e lamella is plural lamella and lamella together one behind the other like in a bangle stand how bangles are all arranged like that they are all arranged and inside a tube like thing will form no? that is called haversian canal got it in that canal we find this inorganic mass rigid mass of inorganic salts made up of calcium and phosphorus that is why they are rigid and strong when you compare both cartilage and bone cartilage is elastic bone is rigid cartilage is non porous bone is porous cartilage does not have blood supply and nerve supply and 
bone has good supply of blood vessels and nerves. Cartilage cells are called chondroblasts and bone cells are called osteoblasts. They are in fluid filled, fluid filled lacuna. These are solid tissues. These two are supporting tissues because they give support, structure and structure to the body. You can see that circular lamella, canaliculi, haversian canal, an osteoblast, chondroblast, all. Now we are moving on to fluid connective tissue, blood and lymph. Blood is present all over the body and blood is composed of two parts, namely the liquid part and the cellular part. Cellular part is made up of three things, namely red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Bone tissue is richly supplied with blood tissue because blood cells are produced in a bone marrow. Is it clear that they, they are, their origin is RBC, the blood cells origin is bone marrow. Now the cellular part of the blood is first one red blood cells. They are called erythrocytes and white blood cells, they are called leukocytes. Leuco means colorless. Their platelets are called blood platelets. They are called thrombocytes. Got it? The function of red blood cells is transport of oxygen and nutrients to the all parts of the body. In return, bringing carbon dioxide and waste materials to the concerned systems. And white blood cells are like soldiers. They fight and they increase our immunity. They fight with the disease causing germs. Otherwise, constantly we fall sick children. But it is not happening because white blood cells are concerned with our immunity. Now, platelets, whenever you have a cartoon, if the blood goes, and that is called bleeding, if it continues, continuous bleeding, a person will die soon for a small wound also. But that is not happening. The wound immediately after 15 seconds, it gets closed by a red color clot on top. That is nothing but blood clot. That is done by set of cells called blood platelets. Got it? These blood platelets immediately come out after the wound and they help in clotting or coagulation. And the liquid part is called plasma. Now we are moving on to lymph. Lymph is the fluid surrounding the body cell. It is essentially the body pl blood plasma that has oozed out of the blood vessels. It contains white blood cells and not the red blood cells. That is why lymph is also rightly referred as blood without red blood cells. Lymph comes out whenever uh, when there is a wound the yellow color, honey color, colorless liquid which comes out that we identify it as lymph children. All our organs are wet the, and that is why there is no friction in our body. They are surrounded by a liquid called lymph. Otherwise there will be constant friction and more wear and tear will be there each organ. But it is not happening because the body cells or each cell is surrounded by Lymph. lymph, both blood and lymph are mainly concerned with transportation and also with the immunity. That is, immunity means protecting against disease causing germs. Now, we are moving on to assignment. Write in A4 sheet, name the kinds of connective tissues, give reasons why connective tissue is a special tissue, define areolar connective tissue, differentiate between cartilage and bone, Differentiate between blood and limb. What is the function of the following? Adipose tissue, tendons, ligaments, blood and limb. Mention the location of cartilage, adipose tissue, tendon and ligaments. Thank you.